Excellent. Our next team is Stress Less, correct? Perfect. With Health Watch. Okay, whoever's taking the mic, whoever dare, uh, maybe explain where you all are from. Here we are. Hello, everyone. Uh, I just want to thank you all for having us today. It was an amazing time here. Uh, my name is Logan Cundiff. I recently graduated from uh, the University of Florida in computer science. And I'm um, Bailey Waldorf. I just recently graduated in computer science from UCF. I'm Dax Tubak, and I also just recently graduated from UCF. I'm Trevor Clipfo. I'm an IT consultant in Orlando, Florida. Uh, I'm Sarah Anderson, and I'm a data scientist in Gainesville. And we are Team Stress Less. So, all across the world, um, organizations are trying to implement initiatives to improve our well being. After all, well being is probably one of the most important things uh, to our state of mind. Yet, there are, there are no metrics being used to quantify this data, um, even though it's very important for these initiatives to see if they're actually working. And actually, um, for a lot of these clinical trials, on average, they cost over $6,000 per person per organization. Our platform that we're offering you today only requires the um, wearable on your wrist, in our case, an Apple Watch, and then our service platform for one twelfth of the cost. And so through this platform, we are able to not only quantify um, your well-being, but see how and see and measure it over time to see if these stress initiatives that are being poured into on like with so much money being poured onto um, to see if they're actually working, thereby saving millions of dollars for these organizations. So by uh, to quantify stress, we actually used um, Trevor here's Apple Watch and the Apple Watch tracks something called the SDNN. Uh, so that's actually the uh, variability between heartbeats. So the time in between heartbeats, it measures the standard deviation between them. Um, and as you can see in the bottom left corner there, a uh, stress, that's where I'm at right now, um, <laughs> is shown by all of the, uh, the closer the peaks are together, the more stress an individual is. And the more spread out they are, it shows the less stress they are. So the way our pipeline works is we gather data from all of the participants, uh, Apple devices or Android devices, all their wearables, and we have them export their data into a web application that we made that will aggregate it all and get rid of all of the stuff that we don't need. And it'll be transferred then to our Python server, which will help to aggregate it even more and calculate some of the values we'll use to then display it into our Salesforce, which serves as sort of a front end monitoring dashboard. Uh, and so we can show you real quick what it looks like. This is our uh, web application in React. And so there's two portals that you can go into. There's the admin dashboard where they can see a list of all of the XMLs from each participant. Uh, this is basically a list of all of the heart rate uh, data from each one of our participants. And they can add and delete as they please. And at the bottom, they have the options to select dates. That's the start and end date of the experiment, as well as the date they introduced a new variable into it. So that's where you want to see if there's any positive or negative correlation with that variable that you added. Uh, and then lastly, you can uh, download that data and then pipe it into Salesforce. Uh, and then the next dashboard we have uh, is just a, it's like a survey for the users. This is once they're done with the experiment, they can download, these are steps for them to download the XML data and upload them into our web application. Uh, so they can go through here, uh, they can accept the terms and conditions. This is so they know exactly what they're getting themselves into. It's totally anonymous. We don't keep track of any names, uh, but we do keep track of other data. And then here's our dashboard that we created. Um, at the top, we have the HRV, which is heart rate variability. This is the average heart rate over each day. And we can keep track of how much percent it's changed after that variable has been, been introduced. So that's that 16.6% .6 that you see at the bottom right. So as you can see, we had a really good positive correlation with that variable that we introduced. Just going back to it. And so the next steps for our app are to integrate an actual native application into iOS or Android. That way it's easier to pipe the data from the health apps into our own. And then we can aggregate it from the uh, app itself rather than a React web application. Uh, then we'd also like to add some additional data measurements like sleep, 
uh, blood pressure and more, and improve the accuracy of some of the metrics that we're already gathering. And then lastly, we'd like to utilize Salesforce's Einstein to use the ML data, uh, ML and algorithm. that is time. Great job. Oh. Awesome. Round of applause. Excellent job. So uh, as an employer, would I be able to uh, recognize individual employees' tendencies for their uh, stress levels to be higher and introduce events that they can then act upon? So if I see a tendency for them to have more stress at a certain time during the day, can I force them uh, to register an event that they went on a walk to see if the measurable uh, produces a result? So we're not, we haven't implemented something for so micro um, for this project. It was more about the macro. So a big company or a health organization or community wants to implement one big change. So they want to implement gyms in all their locations or something like that. Um, and they want to see how well this change correlates with that. So they want to put it in one place. They offer Apple Watches as an incentive to wear. So you get uh, data before it's implemented and then you build a gym. That you go to the gym and you see whether this reduces the HRV or sorry, increases the HRV which indicates that their stress is reduced or their well-being has been increased over time. And then it allows you to say, okay, well, this is a worthwhile initiative. We're going to put gyms everywhere. So for the additional data, I understand uh, the watches does provide sleep data. I'm not sure whether they provide blood pressure data and whether they are accurate. No. Where is that data going to come So from? those are additives. That was uh, um, more fu uh, not futuristic, but like a further down line look. Um, there's a lot of add-ons and separate wearables that provide blood pressure things. So we're... It'll be other wearables. Yeah. Well, got it. Exactly. So how are you going to use Salesforce? So Salesforce right now is used basically as a dashboard, but the uh, AI would allow us to take this data and, for example, healthcare organizations like Advent Health could say, we did this uh, clinical trial and the, it had a positive correlation with the people that came through it. And you can then compare the demographics of the people that came in through before it, and another a new person comes into the hospital, and it aligns up with someone that took that clinical trial, and you can say, wow, this person should be recommended for this clinical trial, this surgery, this thing. Would the hardest part of scaling an operation like this be the normalization of the additional data metrics that you're collecting from different devices? Sorry, could you repeat real quick? The hardest part of scaling this, is it the normalization layer from the different devices you'll be collecting data? Uh, yes, yes it is. So it would be uh, the most difficult part to normalize it and we'd have to put a little bit more work into getting all that uh, sorted Thank and finding out the right metrics. Understood.